Hello! Ah, the mighty SNK Neo Geo, the super console of the early 90s. Absolutely kicked the shit out of every other um, console technically for quite some time after its release. Because it was basically arcade hardware stuck in a box you could plug into your television. And you could play all the classic SNK titles from the arcade and some special other ones as well. And it was all very nice and insanely fucking expensive um like i mean it, it did kind of get a european release but you didn't see it really anywhere something more likely you'd see in an import shop over here because of the horrendous cost of it um if anybody played on this i'll bet you probably didn't own one if you're in the uk at least um but you knew like somebody at school whose family was quite rich and their dad worked in america and occasionally well you didn't know him that well but you'd go around and play king of monsters and that kind of thing it was that sort of aspirational console that you'd never really Really were going to have. You know, you'd see it in the window of the um, import shop and it cost £70 billion. Pounds. So you decided to get a Mega Drive instead. But yes, <clears throat> because of this, the Neo Geo is very well thought of. It was a really good system, a load of really interesting and good games for it. And as I say, a lot of people didn't get one, so they kind of want to own things now. And SNK have not let this pass them by over the years. They do eke out little bits of hardware to uh, keep us a going. For instance, there was that uh, Neo Geo X Gold thing, or whatever it was called, that came out um, a couple of years ago. I reviewed it. It was a big disappointment. It was like a handheld thing you could plug into a joystick that then plugged into the telly, but uh, the screen was all like 16 by 9 cheap panel thing, and ugh. It was all a bit crap. It didn't emulate like, the games very well. Nah. They did release an update for it, which improved it a bit. And in order to do the update, you had to buy like this extra set of games because it used a very specific cable. Ugh. I managed to update mine in the end after borrowing the cable off somebody, and it was a bit better, but still not up there. But in these days of the NES Mini and the SNES Mini, and there's a PlayStation Mini coming, and there's an N64 Mini coming soon, and soon there's going to be like a mini version of your grandmother that you plug into the television and tells you soothing stories or something. Look, everybody's taking their old consoles, making small versions of them that just plug straight into your television, and you can play the old games in a nice, crisp, high-def manner with um, fairly authentic controls. And SNK, as I say, have not let this pass them by for they have released boom a box but what's inside the box answer not a whole lot because i've already taken the unit out as i'll show you in a minute but anyway neo geo mini international version unfortunately the japanese version is slightly nicer than the international one it's got brighter colors however the uh power led isn't as good as i'll show you but anyway pro gear spec advanced entertainment system who remembers those words snk 40th anniversary that's the 40th anniversary of snk the company i hasten to add not of the neo geo as i say neo geo came out 1990 and sort of about a year later in europe thing must get my release dates right i cocked up in the last video and had a brain fart and managed to give the release date of the playstation as the release of the date of the ps2 uh, always annoying when you do that, especially because if you do it on the internet, that means you get weeks of hysterical abuse from emotionally damaged people. And that's never nice, is it, for anybody? Anyway, the legacy lives on. 40 Neo Geo games included. Check it out. Check it out. Mm, there it is. We'll have a look at it properly in a minute. Here's all the games, but we'll come on to those later. It does have blood, suggestive themes and violence, so you know it's going to be good also apparently causes cancer and reproductive harm so it'll kill you and you can't have kids i mean that's that's a very specific warning isn't it oh well it's not going to stop me playing on it there's other things that'll stop me playing on it but uh, we'll get onto those later so yeah you get it in a box you probably guessed that bit i'll just show you briefly what you get in there other than the unit um you get the mighty book of words of course instructions in 957 languages that's a great way to learn very obscure languages is to read one of these front to back and then memorize all that i'm completely talking bollocks i mean even if you did memorize it you'd only know words for things like control and joystick and there's a little box and inside the little box what lives the power cord because it's powered by usb type c so they give you this nice neo geo branded one plug the other end into well any ac adapter for a phone really it only needs like a one amp output so you could use one from a really old phone which is good so a little story time i'm still annoyed about this right so i lent this to a friend before i used it myself because i wasn't going to be here for a couple of days and he's a massive neo geo head massive and was like absolutely dying to see this thing and i was like hey man you can use it first tell me what you think of it cheers he said for he says that a lot 
Um, then he gives it back to me uh, when I come along without this box. Because he'd put it to one side and somehow forgotten it existed. And I said, oh, there's no power cable. And he said, yeah, it doesn't come with one. And I had to use my um, some sort of Mac cable he's got. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I only have one USB-C cable and it's some cheap thing and it wouldn't power it because it was rubbish. So I tried using my Nintendo Switch power supply, which was a stupid idea because I didn't realize Nintendo Switch power supply has a USB-C connector, but it's not actually USB-C compliant. So it could have, you know, fried it or something. Oh dear. No one's on Twitter was trying to get help was like oh god i had to order special leads and all this stuff then i noticed on the box where was it yeah including power cable two meters so i sent him a text saying are you sure there wasn't a power cable in that box he said yeah there definitely wasn't 20 seconds later oh wait i found this white box it's got the like sticky things to put on the cabinet and the power cable Anyway, that's that anecdote. So yes, let's have a look at the unit itself. Well, actually, I'm gonna completely preempt myself there and remove these, because I haven't had a proper good look at these yet. Neo Geo sticker for putting on your ass. I think that's what you do with those. And these are two basically different stickers you can put on the marquee, I presume, at the top. I wonder why it was so blank. There's the answer to that. For here is the unit itself. Oh, I don't know why the theme tune Star Trek has sprung to mind, but there we are. A couple of Neo Geo, I was going to say stickers, but no, they are nicely printed on. Um, yeah, here it is, looks like a little bloody arcade cabinet. What more do you bloody want? Well, the answer is for it to like work and play games and stuff. Guess you forgot to plug the camcorder in. Slightly worrying though, because it said it had like 99% battery like two minutes ago. The battery's dying already, but not like the battery in this Neo Geo Mini, because it doesn't have one. Yep, it looks kind of portable, but it's only portable in the sense that you can take it with you and plug it in elsewhere, because unfortunately, no battery, so you can't sit there on the train playing it. Well, you could if there's a plug socket on the train, or you bought one of those um, phone charging battery power bank things, that would totally... Um, charge it. Mind you, it would look a bit of a nutter sitting on the train going like that, wouldn't you? Anyway, let's have a look at the units. You've got your four buttons of the Neo Geo, you've got your joystick. Tragically, not micro switch. Do you see the thing about Neo Geo sticks? They love their micro switches. In fact, SNK did invent the Neo Geo Pocket, which has the best control of any handheld for my money, which is a tiny little thumbstick with uh, micro switches on. It's bloody fantastic. It's never been used on anything else, or even anything similar has ever been used. And that breaks my heart. Whereas this year, hmm, it's a little bit wobbly in it, but never mind. We'll come on to that later. You've got con uh, 2P, a controller port. Why, yes. At the side, two more USB C ports where you can plug in these specific controllers that they'll sell you for 25 quid a pop. And then you can, uh, well, play it with another controller from a distance. Not that you could play it from much of a distance, because of course, tiny little screen. But, um, you know, you can plug it into your tellies, we'll get onto later, which is what that's for, really. And on the back, um, you've got your mini HDMI out, so you can plug it in your telly, you've got headphone socket and just power socket. And that's your lot, really, guys. Nice and easy. Tell you what, uh, I've had the sofa fitted with a USB-C power supply now, so I'll just uh, plug that in and away we go. Neo Geo, turn on! That's my new theme tune. There we are, 40th anniversary of SNK. Let's zoom in a bit. Neo Geo. So notice a 4x3 screen, which is good. Notice noises for your ears, which are also good, as a general rule. Unless they're too loud and damage your ears, which would be horrible. But this can't do that. Um, little thing I'll point out. Light ring around here for the power, that's rather nice. Japanese version just has a light on the side. But as I say, Japanese version is nicer, brighter colours, so there we go. Right, let's play a game then. Um, do you know what? I was going to do Metal Slug, that's a bit obvious. I'm actually going to run through here. And we're going to play... Uh, doob, doob, doob. Go on. Art of Fighting. There's one of their very first beat-em-ups. Beat em up. We call beat em ups fighting games these days, and we refer to beat em ups as side scrolling beat em ups. I don't know why. Um, many years ago in the 80s, we referred to fighting games as beat em ups, but it doesn't seem to be a thing these days. Anyway, Art of Fighting, one of the first of the SNK fighters. And I tell you what, folks, um, SNK really known for their fighting games. So many of the games in Hero Fighters, and for good reason, because they made lots of bloody good ones. Right, let's go straight in. Watch it go wibbly load load. 
Oh yeah. Sounds right. A couple of them sound a bit off to me at the start when it does that, and um, the game seems to be fine, so there we go. And look at that fucking screen, man. Absolutely superb. It is exactly the right resolution and the right aspect ratio, so everything on it looks bloody perfect, which is tip tip top. No, I care not for Robert Garcia. I care only for... Oh, versus mode is a bad idea, wasn't it? Because that means it's going to try and play against another opponent who's not going to be here. Well, we can try out the controls, can't we? Rio! He's the one who Dan in uh, Capcom Street Fighter series is a piss take of. Oh, rivalry. Go on, Rio. Do some punchings. Nice big sprites for the time. And a bit of zooming in and out. Wait. I'm going to pull my hairs out and throw them at you. That'll teach you, Robert. Buttons aren't bad. As I say, not micro switch at all, but uh, they've got a fairly decent um, feel to them. How easy is it to do a dragon? Don't say dragon punch fireball even. Very easy indeed. Very, very easy. Old dragon punch is not so easy. I'm oh man, does he do that? Can he do that punch? No, not the kick. There's like a back forward back, really weird punch. Sorry, I'm just getting excited about playing art fighting again. Um, so yeah, very easy to do uh, fireballs with this joystick. Not so easy to do your dragon punch. However, it's not, I mean, there's a fair bit of travel on it, but you can still easily get backwards and forwards as like definite directions. You're not accidentally pushing diagonals and getting the characters to jump or anything like that. So it's not a bad controller. It's not ideal by any stretch. Hmm. Yes, there we are. God, I love that move. It's so ridiculous. But yeah, press these two buttons together. Start and select. Bling. And you can save the game. You can load the game. Change the brightness. Change the volume. That's your lot, really. You can go back and select another game. It's all very simple. As you can see, the menu is very, very much based on the one from the NES Mini and the SNES Mini, to say the bloody least. Um, yeah, not fooling anybody there, folks. But it is a bit... Yeah, it's not quite as pretty. It's a bit simpler. Go into the settings there. Yeah, there's nothing else going on. There's no settings for um, making it, you know, ooh, look at this uh, blurring of the pixels and that kind of stuff, because you don't need it, because the screen is tip-top, and uh, you could not ask for better, frankly. Super impressed with that screen, especially after the Neo Geo X. Not massively impressed with the joystick, um, but it's not terrible. It's, it's good enough. You can play, you can enjoy. The problem is it's... Uh, you, you want something, I don't know, it's a bit less... With a bit less travel and a bit more of a definite feel to it for fighting games. It's a pity because there are so many fighting games on it. But still, yep, it's good enough. The thing is, of course, it's all a bit of a novelty playing it like this. Is you're not going to if you're seriously sitting down to play some SNK classics, you don't want to be doing it on a tiny little screen with tiny little controls. Let's zoom out a bit just to show you there. Um, that you have to kind of ooh, scribble your hands over. Ooh, it's it's fun, but it's, it's not the best way of experiencing the games. Which is why you could plug it into your telly and have the external controllers. Wait for it. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, actually, I've got to show you this first. I was also sent this Neo Geo Mini HDMI cable, two meter, an actual SNK Neo Geo branded Mini HDMI to full HDMI cable. Not really sure why that exists, because you can buy these like super cheap. You certainly would not want to be spending money on an expensive SNK one, but there we are. Um, part of the review kit there, so uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, they also sent me two pads. A black one, comes in a box like this, and the white one. And it's, well, it says pretty much an exact looking replica of the old Neo Geo controllers, which is nice. Um, except some of the buttons have been switched around, which I don't understand. Like the, the A and D, weren't they in different places? Pretty sure they were, because I looked at the picture earlier, and they were. Um, so that's odd. Really annoyed my friend who's in a Neo Geo. I mean, it doesn't worry me that much at all. It doesn't affect the gameplay, do you know what I mean? But, ooh, these purists, they don't like it. Tell you what I didn't fucking like, guys. No micro switches in the pad again. Look at the travel on that. Now, imagine that this pad is designed for micro switches, because it fucking is. And now imagine what it's like to try and play with this. I bet about half of you now are going, oh, oh. And I tell you what, you are not wrong. This is fucking dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. 
um, borderline unusable at times. Trying to go through the menu is awkward because it keeps moving up when you want to move left and right, because there is no definite left and right. Look, it's as easy to go diagonal as it is left and right. And the same for up and down, any cardinal direction. It's bloody ridiculous. You can't just remove the micro switches from something and stick on what's basically a PlayStation fucking analog pad underneath. Absolutely awful, awful, awful. Now, whenever you get a terrible controller, I always end up showing quite a few people, and there's always at least a couple who go, oh, I quite liked it. 12 people have used this. I'm not gonna count my friend who's a uh, Neo Geo head because he was, he was so angry about this that <laughs> you would not believe it. But um, yeah, nobody liked it. The best I got was mm, and it sort of, mm, it, was, it was not really nice, is it? That was the best. Two people claimed it to be totally unusable, which I think is a little bit far, because if I've played with this like for 45 minutes and I got a bit better at it, but it's still awful. I will say though, it's fucking fantastic for doing fireball motions. You're never gonna get one of those wrong. Terrible for attempting to do dragon punch. And as I say, terrible for trying to walk backwards and forwards without your character jumping. It's absolutely abhorrent. I cannot believe they're charging you 25 quid for something so fundamentally flawed and stupid. It's, uh, I mean, everybody's complaining about them, and quite rightly so, because they are absolute toot. So, you're plugging this into your telly to play your games properly. What can you play it with other than this? Nothing. No, you can try various adapters and things, nothing works. Um, there is video of uh, somebody getting a, like a PlayStation controller to work, but that's going like, through two different masses of custom hardware to make an adapter, which is just, you know, it's not something the guy at home is going to do, especially when one of the points of this is you just buy it and you plug it in and it works. So that's a real shit. So in order to play it on your television with decent controls, you have to literally get a really long uh, mini HDMI to HDMI cable and then sit with this on your lap and use these controls because this is bloody awful. But wait, it gets worse, because the HDMI output, yeah, it's fine, comes out at 720p, games look fucking awful. Absolutely bloody dreadful. It's like somebody has smeared their balls with Vaseline and then wiped it across the bloody screen. And, uh, seriously, it's absolutely shite. It looks as if, <laughs> maybe it's going to be authentic, it honestly looks as if you have plugged a bloody um, composite cable into the back of a modern LCD television. It's blurry and awful, um, really quite bad. In fact, I'm gonna splice in here a photograph I took of my television uh, playing this game. And yeah, look at it. I mean, compare that to how precise the upscaling of things like the NES Mini and the SNES Mini and blah, blah, blah. And even just like a cheap bloody Android emulator box you can plug into your television is absolutely light years beyond this. It's absolutely stupid. They've totally ruined this for serious play by giving you terrible controllers and making it look crap on your television. I mean, so now the best way of experiencing Neo Geo games is still with some sort of existing emulation thing. Unless you really, really want to play it on a tiny screen with tiny novelty controls. And that's not what it's for. I mean, let's face it, it's basically a device to look nice on the shelf for people who really like Neo Geo and occasionally turn it on and go, ooh, and sort of show people and that kind of thing. You're not gonna seriously play it, especially if you wanna play with two players, because what are you gonna do? You've gotta have it on the television. You can't both crowd around that while somebody's got fucking dreadful controller that fell out of Satan's ass. Oh dear. So as you can tell, I'm not very impressed with the experience through a television. I did actually record some footage directly from it, and it looks slightly better than it does on a television. I think because um, very high quality capture equipment, I mean, they all are these days, aren't they? And, you know, decent upscaling and that. So maybe you can make it look slightly better <laughs> by actually, um, like, playing it through an Elgato capture card or something. But, uh, that's, yeah. Just such a disappointment. Anyway, let's talk about something positive. Let's talk about video games, specifically all of these ones. Now, obviously I haven't played all these and I can't just sort of tell you what they're like off the top of my head. Oh wait, I'm Ashens. Right, 
Metal Slug. Metal Slug is one of the games people think of when they think of SNK and specifically the Neo Geo. Really fantastic run and gun shooty game, really good fun, and it has a weird little tank that you get in called the Metal Slug, which is great. Um, yeah, really like Metal Slug because uh, frankly there'd be something wrong with your brain if you didn't. And each game is different enough to justify its inclusion, frankly. Metal Slug, Metal Slug 2, Metal Slug 3, Metal Slug X, I can't remember what one fits in, Metal Slug 4, Metal Slug 5. All the Metal Slugs you can eat, six different metal slugs there's a metal slug 3 isn't that generally considered the best no i didn't like it as much i still remember one of the bosses was a pain in the ass and some of these games have an annoying thing where enemies can hit you and like turn you into a slower form like a mummy or something and it's just don't slow the game down guys i don't know but they're all really solid you can have good fun with any of those to say the bloody least metal slug is great I'm using the phrase to say the least a lot today. I don't know why that is. King of the Monsters. Now, King of the Monsters, I think, gets a bad rap. It's a wrestling game with kaiju. You know, giant um, Godzillas and uh, funny monsters like that. And, yeah, it's simple, but it's fun. Really good fun in two-player. It's just occurred to me I've never really played it in one-player. Maybe the one-player mode's a bit shitey. Maybe that's the problem. Don't know. King of the Monsters 2, I don't like, really. It's it's weird. It's like they've dropped the kind of wrestling thing and turned it more into a side-scrolling beat-em-up. But I never enjoyed King of the Monsters 2. Um, some people do, but it never floated my boat at all. More of a fan of the first one there. Sengoku 3, though. Ooh, Sengoku 3. Fucking brilliant. So, it's, again, side-scrolling beat-em-up, but a fantastic one. I mean, these games live or die by the variety in them and Sengoku games are absolutely insane um, just crazy wall-to-wall -wall shit zombie soldiers and uh, stuff from Japanese history and goodness knows what else and you, you're flying up to cloud planets and god knows what it's really great it's just super fun all the way through fantastic graphics and animation I'm very sad that Sengoku 1 and 2 aren't on this because uh, they're fantastic and substantially different. And it's a pity, because there's a bit, I don't know, a bit too many of the one-on-one -on -one fighting games, I think, and, you know, a nice brawler like that would have been good. But there we are. Magician Lord can piss off. Magician Lord, listen to me. Piss off. Go on. Get out of it. Piss off. No, I don't like Magician Lord at all. It is a, well, it's a sort of platform game, really. Pain in the arse platform game. Just annoyingly over difficult. And half the time it's very, very difficult to see things coming in time to react to them. So you end up having to memorise fucking level layouts. If I wanted a memory test, I'd go to the memory test shop. Anyway, Blue's Journey is oh, yeah, not very well thought of, frankly. So Blue's Journey is a bit of a shitey platform game. Uh, it's got an interesting size changing mechanic and it's not dreadful or anything, but it just pales next to, you know, Super Mario and that, which is trying to ape a bit. And yeah, I'd, yeah, yeah, not a fan of Blue's Journey at all. Now, Shock Troopers, on the other hand, is bloody great. Uh, vertically scrolling shoot them up, a bit like Commando and Mercs and that kind of thing. Really super good fun. Always like Shock Troopers. Shock Troopers Second Squad, the sequel, again, different enough um, to warrant inclusion. Um, yeah, another really good game. Robo Army, side scrolling beam up again. Yeah, not, not very good. Didn't, didn't just, I don't know, it's kind of short. But there's something, it just felt repetitive. It just didn't feel like there was enough difference to it. It's all sort of based around cyborgs and robots and stuff, but not a huge fan, guys. Not a huge fan. Crossed Swords, I really like. Now, Crossed Swords, <laughs> this is one of those things where I couldn't make a case that it's a particularly good game, but I always just really enjoyed playing it. It's kind of a third person sword fighting game where you sort of have a view behind your character who is transparent, incidentally, and then you block these attacks and hit things and it's just I don't know just always quite enjoyed it there's a very very similar game um based around a sort of James Bond idea called something like the super spy in fact I think it is literally called the super spy which is a very similar game but in sort of more contemporary setting with more guns and punching and kicking than uh, swords and that um I always enjoyed them both but super spy isn't on this so there we are but yeah it's just it's, it's not going to change your life but it's a good laugh mutation nation so again slide slide side scrolling beat em up um yeah so i do love side scrolling beat em ups but so few of them are good. Mutation Nation is not a bad one. It has a sort of uh, weird special attack system where you pick up like orbs and stuff, and all the enemies are weird mutants. Um, yeah, I didn't mind it. Again, mm, 
I, I would put it above Robo Army, but it's not one of my favourites, to say the least. I mean, Sengoku 3 there is really going to win this uh, the battle for the scrolling beat em up crowd on this. Uh, three Count Bout is a wrestling game, and yeah, it's all right. I, I remember the playing against the computer and the bloody AI just gets ludicrously difficult after a certain point is a bit of a bit of a disappointment frankly especially because it's up against things like um god the arcade game wrestlefest which you could just emulate these days fantastic um and saturday night slam masters and it's just not in anywhere near as good as either of those really king of fighters 95 king of fighters 97 king of fighters 98 king of fighters 2000 king of fighters 2002 it's a lot of king of fighters now that may seem weird if you are not uh sort of au fait with how King of Fighters works. It's not a case of 2002 is just better than all the rest. They all sort of have different fighter rosters and slightly different mechanics. There's enough difference between them to justify the inclusion of all of them, although I still kind of wish they didn't and put in some a bit more variation in the games. But anyway, we'll come on to that. Um, yeah, King of Fighters 95 has a special place in my heart because that's the one I had on the Sega Saturn. Came with a bloody extra memory cartridge and stuff. But these are all good fun. Basically, they're um, you pick three people, have tag team fights, and the people are often fresh characters or ones taken from other SNK properties. And yeah, it's it's always sort of played second fiddle to Street Fighter in the public's eye, but it's really, really solid fighting games. I would recommend any of them. Now, Art of Fighting that we had a quick go at earlier. Um, yeah, don't fucking understand why it's on here, frankly, because it's a little bit stiff, and the sequels to Art of Fighting are much better, and they're not on here. You've put, like, the, the weakest game in the series. I don't understand that. Now, Fatal Fury, they've been far more sensible with, because they've started off with a Fatal Fury... Fatal Fury? Oh, God, that sounds dangerous. Um, Fatal Fury Special, which is, uh... Yeah, that's kind of the start of when the series properly got good. So, um, yeah, no complaints. Then Real Bouts Fatal Fury, another really good one. Um, is there enough difference between those two? I can't remember off the top of my head to warrant inclusion, but um, yeah, I, I don't understand why they went with the weakest out of fighting game, but they've sorted that out with the Fatal Furies there. And finally, Guru, Mark of the Wolves, which is kind of the Street Fighter 3 of Fatal Fury. Um, you know, it's set in the future, it's got amazing um, animation that, and it's brilliant. Guru, Mark of the Wolves, is like one of the top 2D fighters to this day for my money i think it's absolutely superb and it's great to see it on here samurai showdown 2 samurai showdown 4 and samurai showdown 5 special so i was never much of a samurai showdown man um played them a bit on 3do if i remember of all things um yeah i don't know again if they're different enough to really want three different versions maybe so um it's one of those games yeah i just never quite get into it's quite an enjoyable thing playing as the blue ninja guy keeps shouting for his dog here, puppy. Ah, the fun. And there's that red green guy with the green guy with the claw. Can't remember what he's called now. But yes, um, yeah, it's it's very well thought of as a series, but never did much for me. The Last Blade Two. Now that's really damn good. Um, a game you don't hear mentioned that often, but uh, yeah, really tip top. Um, I think it's sensible to not include the first Last Blade because Last Blade Two is essentially just here it is, but better. Speaking of which, World Heroes Perfect. So World Heroes is a more more street fightery game, shall we say, with our tongue in our cheek there, because, hmm, yeah. Um, it has some very weird characters in, like, uh, that's the one with Rasputin in, who, yeah, very interesting character with very interesting super moves. Um, but, yeah, World Heroes Perfect is the best version of it. There's no reason to have the other versions. They are just the same game, but cut down, essentially. Well, not cut down. The same game, but with less added to them. I'm being retroactive there. Then Kazuna Encounter. Again, Kazuna Encounter Super Tag Battle is another one-on-one -on -one fighter. Um, except with a tag system, obviously. It's the sequel to a game I can never remember the name of, so I'm going to stall and uh, talk about, hey, it had really big sprites, this one, and the European release is insanely rare. Um, however, like, the cartridge is the same as the Japanese cartridge, and it's only the box and the instructions. I've remembered it now. It's Savage Rain. Savage Rain. Kazuna Encounter is the sequel to Savage Rain. We got there in the end. Um, Ninja Masters is the one that seemed to have been relatively forgotten until recently. Um, it's, it's a pretty good one, Ninja Masters. Um, interesting weapon mechanics. You can sort of throw your weapon at people, if I recall. Um, I need to go back and play that a bit more often, but uh, yeah, I don't mind it. I think it is a quality game. Top players golf. No, 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 no. 
Top Players Golf is a very weak golf game, and there's no reason for it to be on here at all, because there's a fantastic golf game for the Neo Geo called, everybody say it with me, Neo Turf Masters. I don't understand what's on it. I wondered, is it because these are all first party SNK games that was made by a third party? But I looked into it, and uh, Neo Turf Masters was made by Nazca who also made Metal Slug, and Metal Slug's on here because SNK bought the company Nazca years ago. I've got no idea where they put Top Players Golf above um, Neo Turf Masters. That, Top Players Golf is not worth playing, Neo Turf Masters is great, just don't understand it. Uh, Super Sidekicks, this is odd again, um, I mean, this is a football as in, or soccer game if you prefer. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know much about this, so I asked my mate basically who said uh, this is, um, yeah, not as good as its sequels and doesn't understand why they put the first one on you get a bit out of fighting on that front um i remember enjoying one arcade god one arcade game i don't know if it was ever ported to a home system super cup finals i think it was made by taito and um oh man like you you had a star player on each team who had superpowers and things like this and occasionally the game would just go what's happening and like some strippers would come on and distract the ref and you could beat the other players out while the ref wasn't looking now that was fun is there a home version of that? Gonna look that up later. I don't know. Anyway, Super Sidekicks. Meh. Football Frenzy. Um, I found this difficult because I didn't know anybody who knows anything or cares about American football. Um, so I looked it up on the internet and it said uh, it seemed to have a mixed reception. I think some people liked it and some people didn't. So that was useful. And most people were saying it wasn't as good as like Tecmo bowl or whatever the um, big arcade one was called, but that wasn't out on Neo Geo, so meh. Now we finally get into some shoot-em-ups. There's some really good shoot-em-ups on the Neo Geo, and Blazing Star is one of them. Uh, it's a little bit R-typey, as in a bit like the game R-type, the old, you know, horizontal shooting game. Um, I liked it, actually. It, it gets a bit bullet helly, uh, but not in a bad way. Uh, yeah, I didn't like the sort of pre-rendered graphics they use particularly, but it plays really well. And if I recall, the end boss is like a giant mutant cyber baby thing. Can't remember. Maybe I'll get that confused with something else. But anyway, yeah, it's a good game. Last Resort is another... Uh, horizontal shooter and it's one is very r-typey i mean like like this <laughs> this is clearly um very heavily inspired by r-type shall we say and again it's really good really solid shooter ghost pilots is a vertical shooter um in the vein of uh, flying shark that kind of thing it's okay it's it's fine it's a bit slow not that great no, it's, it's, you get a bit of fun out of it it's no strikers 1945 put it that way uh, strikers 19, 1945 there was a neo geo version wasn't there but uh, i imagine it's third party which is why it hasn't ended up on here and that's it apart from puzzled which is like tetris but you kind of need to remove existing blocks to release like a balloon at the bottom in japan it was called joy joy kid which always amused me but yeah puzzled isn't a bad game um but overall, it's a good selection, but the weakness is, although we've said, you know, King of Fighters and Metal Slug, oh, they're justified to have all these versions, uh, the problem is, between them, that is 11 slots out of 40. That's over a quarter of all the games are Metal Slug or King of Fighters, so maybe mm, they could have dropped one or two, I don't know. Um, the Japanese version, incidentally, has different games on it slightly. Uh, you've got Aggressors of Dark Combat, which is a pretty interesting fighting game. That would have been nice as opposed to one of the King of Fighters, actually. Uh, you've got Alpha Mission 2, which was good. Uh, Top Hunter, Roddy and Kathy, which is a game I've never actually played, but is uh, meant to be quite interesting. That would have been nice, do you know what I mean? And there's two really obvious omissions for me, right? Where is League Bowling? Now, League Bowling is like, a, it's a fairly simple but very fun um, bowling game. Just been a nice little addition, but it's like something that a lot of Neo Geo owners had, and it just seems odd to me it's not on it. But not as odd as Narm 1975, which is another sort of commando uh, shootery sort of game. Um, no, it isn't. What the fuck am I talking about? Um, Narm 1975 is the. Oh, I've got it confused. So that is Narm 1975 the one that's like Cabal, isn't it? And you see behind the um, little guys, he runs around and shoots into the screen. Yes, I'm getting it confused. But that was the first ever Neo Geo game, to my recollection at the very least. And it just seems odd. It's not on here on any version. Strange. Um, you could have had Rage of the Dragons, which was another um, one-on-one -on -one fighter, a fairly interesting one. Um, that was made by Playmore, so not a first-party title, but SNK Playmore is the company now. They've merged, so they must have the rights to it, surely. And I tell you what I really would have liked to have seen. 
Nightmare in the Dark, right? Now, that was an arcade game, Neo Geo, that was never released for home. It's never been released, I don't think, on any system for anything. Um, they could have ported that across as like a special thing, you know, oh, never released before, but but they didn't. But yeah, they're all first party titles or, you know, companies they now own, so you're not going to see, unfortunately, Waku Waku 7 or Breaker's Revenge or Pulse Star, that's another one that's like our type. Aero Fighters 3, wasn't there? Neo, Neo Bomberman, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a good Bomberman. Um, there's Buster Move, wasn't there? Old Puzzle Bobble. Um, Magical Drop 3, it's probably better than Puzzled, actually. And oh, God, bloody Wind Jammers. Windjam is a very unique Neo Geo game. It's like a sort of frisbee game, but a little bit super powered. I've never enjoyed it because I've never been any good at it. But uh, again, a lot of people like Windjammers, so mm, shame really. But there we go. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't really matter what's on it because you're not going to, unless you're really keen on playing things and tiny little joysticks, you're not going to be plugging it into your telly and having much fun with it. There are just better ways of playing Neo Geo games, and it's through emulation on other devices, and that's a real bloody shame, especially when you take into account the fact that this little bastard costs £130. £130! So that's an expensive thing to have sit on your shelf and occasionally impress your friend Kevin with, let's face it. Um, oh, and the controllers, of course, are extra. £25 each. Not that anyone in their right mind would pay 25 quid for this. It's a pity, because it's really solidly built as well, but... Ah, what have you done? You can't just remove the micro switches and expect it to work! Um, so yeah, so actually if you wanted to play it on your television, assuming you've already got a mini HDMI to uh, HDMI cable, we can pick one of those up cheap anyway, that's 180 quid by the time you've bought both controllers for something that looks crap and you basically can't control properly. I don't know, I mean, you buy the games on PS4 or Switch or whatever, they're all on their bloody, um, you know, respective marketplaces for about... I think the Switch games, they're like six quid for a Neo Geo game, if I remember. That sounds like a thing. But yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Before anybody asks, is it hackable? Uh, nobody's entirely sure yet. Uh, maybe they'll find a way to hack it. Maybe they won't. Nobody has as yet. But... Uh, uh, it's not looking as easy as things like the NES Mini and the SNES Mini, put it that way. But yeah, overall, big bloody disappointment. This, I mean, that screen is great. A million points and a big kiss on the lips for that. And this joystick and the buttons, well, all right, we can live with that. But anything that's involving plugging it into the telly is a huge, huge badness. And yeah, there's just no, there's no excuse for it in this day and age, guys. Really is no excuse for it. Um... Trying to think of anything I've missed. Oh, yeah, if you do plug it into a television, you can then turn on the absolutely disgusting pixel smoothing algorithm stuff to make the picture look awful. It actually helped a little to make it look clearer on my television, which goes to show how bad the output is. But yeah, uh, what a bloody shame. A swing and a miss. Well, it's a swing and a kind of hit if you just want something tiny and it does, but who? This is not the way to experience these games. I'm gonna stop going on about it now. I'm just disappointed. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. That's a lie, I'm angry and disappointed, constantly. And it's partially your fault. And it's not even a case of just being angry because it's inauthentic without the micro switches. It's a case of, it's just not bloody pla- Right, I will really stop going on about it now, bye. I eventually decided to put that marquee sticker on in case you were wondering. Did I mention this controller's not very good? Thank you.